For a long time, I've been wondering if we could build a solid state crystal radio where I replace the coil with these surface mount solid state inductors. And to be honest, most of the projects I start, I have a pretty fair idea if it's going to work or not. Sometimes it surprises me, but yeah, this one, I really have no idea. I, it's really going to come down to, I have to build it and try it. But okay, this is, this is the plan. We are going to take these surface mount inductors, replace this coil. And we have these parts, 22 microhenry, 33 microhenry, and 47 microhenry parts over here. Uh, I'm going to use this radio, pretty much this setup. In fact, this is the same diagram, circuit diagram, and build the equivalent. This is version 1.0, and my plan is to make it smaller over time. If this works out, get smaller uh, solid state inductors. Why am I doing this? Well, it's smaller, it's lighter, it's more portable, it's more efficient. It's just easier all the way around. My major concern is that my ferrite rod radio failed miserably because it was just too inefficient. This is a breakdown of that radio. So here are 20 turns, here are 30 turns, and here are 80 turns. You can see the taps here and here. Um, so we have to have the equivalent inductance in each of these pieces. And this is what I have calculated. Now, how did I get that? Well, my equipment will not measure these subcomponents of the coil because uh, there's just too much interference from the rest of the coil. So what I had to do is measure the entire coil and that comes out to 192.45 microhenries. And then assume that each one of these was the ratio of this to the total piece. So on the first one, for example, it's 20 turns to 130 turns total times the measured inductance of the whole coil. And I got roughly 30. So the best I can do is 33 microhenries here. And then we repeat that over again for the 30 turns. And I got 44.41 microhenries. And out here I got 118.43. So this combination should come pretty close, close enough to work. Okay. So this is the theory. This is the calculation. Nothing to it, but to go do it. Okay. Let's go to the workbench. So this is set up as from the diagram earlier. And what we need to do is we need to solder these three together, just uh, end to end. And then these two together. And in these two big gaps here and here, we need to have taps. Yes, I didn't mean to rhyme that, but I did. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. I need to clamp these down and get it ready and do it. Here we have them clamped into place. I'm using my cutter to hold them vertically in the clamp while I tighten it down. And we need to solder here and here. And that's pretty much it. If you hear a noise in the background, that is the fan running because I don't like poisoning myself with solder fumes. So... Okay, that looks adequate. Not as tight together as I would like. Okay, so let's do the next ones. And this is the joint between the two 22 micro, micro Henry components, the two 20s. For our two taps, I'm just going to use some pieces of solder wick right there. Lay one in there like that, one over here. Uh, I'm going to lay down a little bit of flux, which I don't normally do. But oh, yeah, listen to that sizzle. Now I need to make sure I get these on the right places, or this will be a mess.
Oh, that was hot. Okay. Is this one here? Nope, not going to be cooperative. Hmm. Looks it was like my solder wick is the one causing the problem. Okay, there we are. Okay, I'll hook it up and see what she does for us. Well, this is our setup, and this is wired exactly like the diagram. Here is our inductor strip back here. This is our coil, and it is wired. So this goes to the capacitor. That's the red wire over here, so that's the air capacitor. The green wire comes over here, and it's one side of the earphone. And this knob is, sets the resistance on the earphone. So not really much to do with this circuit, but just so I can change it if necessary. There's our diode. So let's start over again. It starts here, diode, through the resistor and across the earphone. And then over here, this is our ground. Ground comes to here and then goes back to here. So this is our ground wire. And then it comes back to here, which is the ground. And then the yellow is the antenna, and it's right back there. So, as you can see on the oscilloscope, we're getting a station. Not very strong station. Not what we're used to. So let's tune it this way, see if we get anything else. And the answer is not really no. So there's our strong station. This is only about a kilometer from my house, so it's, you know, it's, uh, it'll light up the fluorescent lights at night and keep going keep going and nothing i mean i'm getting one station and not all that well and because uh yeah i've also tried so right now i've got two of the capacitor gangs tied in there if i undo one of them uh, it's pretty much the same. There, I got a little bit more, a little bit more capacitor plate in play. Um, but a couple interesting things. If I touch this, you can see what happens. So it seems like stronger coupling or something. I'm not sure what's going on there, but I get more signal. And when I come in contact with these plates over here, I get a little bit stronger signal too. So not sure what's going on right there. Yes, yeah, so you can see that. Um, not sure what's going on there. In some ways it acts like maybe I don't have enough inductance. And so maybe I'll put something together with that. Um, yeah, so uh, in fact, let me do that. Let me go put together a different strip with some more inductance and maybe a few more taps in there and see if we can do any better. Okay, be right back. This is the second induction coil that I made, and they're all the 47 microhenries. And the reason I did that is because the way this, the first one was acting, it seemed like there wasn't enough inductance, so I just went ahead and, and stuck this together, and I put tabs uh, taps rather on all of the connections so I could try all the different permutations which I have and as you can see right here it is picking up a signal it's very strong however once we get off of it that's it I'm getting exactly one station gets pretty well there's ah, uh, I mean I don't know what you want to call it there's just a whisper down in this area 
but I can just barely hear it and I can't make out what they're saying, so I don't really count that as a station. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's not a crystal radio if you only get one station. You can do that with a diode. And I'm afraid that I'm back to the same old problem where these uh, inductors with the ferrite, however the ferrite's uh, around it or in it or whatever, it's just not, uh, just not efficient enough to work with a crystal radio. I might keep fussing with it, see what I can do, some different combinations of inductors, but otherwise, yeah, this is kind of a disappointment. I was really hoping this would work. I thought these were a lot more efficient and, and it would happen, but anyway, um, yeah, I'm making mistakes, so you don't have to. Hope you found that useful and interesting in your crystal radio experimentation.